Hey, my name is Ralph and I'm a Flex Film and today we're going to attempt the front windshield on this 2017 Tesla Model S and we're going to be using our Nano Flex 70 high performance window film. Okay, like always, our first step is to prep the surface of the glass. We're going to use a dry shrink method and I've already cleaned this glass before the video and now I'm just going to rub this Irish Spring soap, thin coating all the way across. We're going to let it dry and then we're gonna start the next step. And I'm just gonna show you guys how I like to do this. I like to just spray a little water on it and get it lathered up. And then I'll put like spots on the glass. And I, there's a reason for that. <clears throat> Sometimes these cars come in a little toasty, you know, from being outside. And then I can kind of quickly patch them all together like this. And as I'm doing this, literally this, this soap is drying on the glass. And then I don't even have to wait for it. It's ready to start the process. And this is just half. Uh, we'll speed the camera up and I'll do the other half. I'm gonna repeat the same exact step. Okay, now that our soap is dried, which is almost dry when I was fi uh, finished applying it, we're gonna measure the width of the windshield. And I do that really quick like. And I'm gonna get about 58, 59. I'm gonna round it to 60 inches. I like to have more than not enough. And then I'm gonna walk over here and I'm gonna show you how I dispense the film off my little uh, shelf. Uh, check it out. Okay, here's my little shelf thing here. This is actually a slitter, film slitter tray. And it's mounted to a, uh, some, some wood shelf that I made out of some wood I bought at Home Depot. Uh, pretty easy to use. It's just, it kinda keeps the shop clean and I can put whatever roll in a box that I want on there to dispense the film. Now I measured a 60 inches a second ago. And so I'm gonna just, you know, carefully pull down my 60 inches. Nothing formal here, just, I don't have a, this is not, this is more like a studio rather than a shop. So this is how we got it set up. I know that's the amount of film that I need. And this is the NanoFlex 70. And what I'm gonna do, because I'm gonna show you guys how we would do this without any help, is I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll it up. I'm gonna determine which side my release liner is on, which is this side facing us. And I wanna make sure it's rolled up on the inside. It's a little tricky sometimes to start a roll uh, in the beginning, especially when it's rolled the opposite way. But I can do it if I finagle around with it enough. Once I get it started, it goes a lot quicker. So far, so good. Just wanna try not to crease it. Now I'm gonna roll it. This is the direction I want to roll it in because I want to kind of let it unroll itself on the front windshield in, in sort of a managed fashion. You'll see in a minute how I do it. It's a little loose. I'm going to try to tighten it up a little bit and start over. <clears throat> try not to crease it, just handling it very gently. Earlier in the video, I said this was a high performance film and I actually meant high performance ceramic film. Big difference. But anyway, I'm just going to Casually start my cut over here. Probably many ways I could do this. Okay, now we're gonna go to the front windshield. Okay, now I've got the film positioned like I want, like the way I've rolled it up. And I'm just gonna carefully lay it out on the car. It's dry now, so it's not gonna stick. And I'm just gonna help it along as far as I can reach. And then I'm gonna sort of let it go on its own. Voila, <laughs> that's how I do it when I'm by myself. Now I'm gonna carefully position the film. I wanna make sure it's covered on both sides. I could have always cut the film shorter to save a little product, but for the video, I just would rather not have to deal with that, you know, possibility of me short cutting it too short. I just wanted to get it on there. And I wanna make sure everything's really straight because when I shrink it, you know, I really want to get the most out of my shrink. I don't want this film to be to the side because then I might have to shrink my fingers to the side to get it to work out right. And that's a lot of, a lot of trouble. So I'm gonna anchor the film like this. Now see, my soap is actually letting my film stick. And I don't have to have any water with this method, which I love. And I'm gonna, <clears throat> Try to anchor my film 
on this side, and then we'll go do the same on the other side. Okay, see that's, that's anchored. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Okay, let's anchor it same way. I've got my, the fingers that I wanna shrink on top and bottom. I've got my film anchored. And now I wanna do a quick pre-trim. This is a pre-trim. I don't wanna do the final trim yet. I just wanna do something to get the film shaped, shaped up. I don't put a lot of pressure. I don't wanna cut the glass. I'm using my stainless steel blade. Notice the angle that I'm holding my knife. I'm not holding it like this. I'm holding it really low. And I don't put a lot of pressure on it. I don't need a lot of pressure. A sharp stainless steel blade, that's all I need. And then I'm gonna tear away like this. And then I'm gonna place this to the side. I'm gonna cut the top carefully. It is larger, about an inch. Maybe in some places a little less. And I'm gonna go back and cut it again. And I'm gonna repeat the same steps. I'm gonna break my blade because this blade is probably way too dull now. I always want a sharp blade. I definitely don't want to scratch this glass. Dull blades scratch glass, especially at bad angles. So by keeping it sharp and holding it at the right angle, you're not gonna be scratching anything. This is a, I guess technically the second Tesla I've already tended, so I've tested the first one. And uh, you know, it's hard to scratch this glass. There's nothing out of the ordinary about it. On a new car, I always, you know, always worried about something, you know, I discover that's new that, you know, causes trouble. And so far this one passed all my tests. Anyway, this is the pre-trim. Lay this to the side. Uh, I'm getting ready to uh, heat mold this. So I just wanna sort of evaluate what I gotta shrink, how it's gonna go. Make sure everything's perpendicular, up and down. A little, little tricky in the corner, not too bad. <clears throat> Same thing over here, I just wanna make sure everything is prepared for shrinking. Okay, I don't wanna force too much in this corner. It's gonna be my, my, my hard part right, right here and on the other side. Okay, and the next step, we're gonna pull the heat gun out and we're gonna start shrinking it. Okay, now it's time for the shrinking phase. I'm gonna use my well-built heat gun. They're almost extinct now. I'm gonna put the cord over my shoulder. We definitely don't wanna scratch this car. Owner would be really, really mad. Um, let's uh, just start tackling this. I, I'm, I'm gonna use my, my regular strategy. Uh, I start heating the tops of these fingers just a little bit, just to set the stage. I go about as far as I can reach, you know, within reason. And I take my time. Don't really need this card yet. I'm just sort of seeing what these fingers are gonna do. Notice how I'm spreading everything out. I'm not using, I'm not just hammering down on one finger. I'm using a lot of space to manage one finger to get the most like, smoothest possible shrink I can get. See it starting, you don't want them to get sideways. You want to keep everything vertical. That's very important. It's hard to talk and shrink at the same time. At least it is for me. I, sometimes I try to get in the zone here. So far I'm like the way this is going. I just found out my heat gun was only on the uh, heat setting number one. I just clicked it on the number two. I wanted a little bit more heat. This, this is supposed to be about 932 degrees. The first setting was like 700 and something. Just, just wasn't giving me what I wanted. Now, now it's really responding. <clears throat> See, now I can kind of move faster. 
I'm still not trying to hammer down on any one of these fingers. I'm just doing a little bit at a time, kind of getting them to dance around. This isn't a video about heat molding exactly. I could make a long video out of that. I'm just trying to go through the process of how I'm going to tint this particular front windshield. Um, the, the next steps of installing it and prepping are kind of cool. This is just a kind of a generic heat molding that anybody would probably do. Everybody's got their own techniques and methods. Seems like on video I struggle more than I do when I'm not being filmed. Imagine that. Just the way it is. But anyway, this is turning out pretty good. Probably being a little aggressive right here with the heat molding. This is a back wind. I'd probably be kind of worried about some peanut bubbles, but because it's a front windshield, I'm not going to have any problems. That was probably the easier part. This is going to be the uh, more difficult part up here. So let's take our time with this. I'm going to just... I can actually see better than I could over there the way the light is. I can actually see the fingers, what they're doing. I was having to do a little guesswork over there. This film is so clear, harder to see. Notice how I've, I've shrunk about this much. I can almost like eliminate this part now of having to worry about it. I'm going to press that back down on the glass and then kind of start refocusing on this side now. Again, I'm going to start a little bit over here, a little bit over there. I'm working my way across. I'm just trying to get all these fingers to lay down flat without hammering down on any one in particular. Now, it does get a little more tricky in this corner, I will admit. Let's see here. So far, things are looking good, though. I'm gonna take advantage of a little side shrink this film will do. That'll, that'll uh, take a lot of uh, pressure off the top here with the real heavy fingers. I don't know if you saw that, those fingers on the side just sort of stuck real easy. That's what I like about this film. Has some options. It's kind of funny, but this film here is, uh, it's actually, it's got, it's versatile. You can do all kinds of things with it. You can break rules. It's not, it's not real sensitive like those multi-layered films that you got to heat on the back and the front and be careful from ghosting. You're just not going to have that, that issue with this type of technology. This is a two-ply chassis. It's not intended to be a flat glass product that's trying to be fitted for a, for a car. This is for a car. can be used for houses too, but it is a two-ply chassis. Let's see here. We got a little bit of trickiness up here. Got to be careful just not to pinch it up. Could easily happen. I'm kind of out of the woods on that, but I always like to finish out my, my shrinking. A little side shrinking there. I remember the first time I tended one of these, I actually didn't cut it so close right here. I actually came further out and further up and I actually pulled on it. And I would heat fingers from about here this way this way, this way, and by the time I got here, they were almost eliminated. Uh, probably would have, if I could go back, I would have used that technique rather than the one I just did. This one was really tricky and really hard to uh, pull off. A lot harder than it should have been. Now, I'm gonna go on the other side of the car and we're gonna do the same steps, hopefully get the same results, and then we'll be ready to do a final trim and then we'll be ready for the install.
Okay, now that we're done with the shrinking, it's time to do a final trim, but I'm gonna have a, a shop light to help me out so I can see through. I just placed the light in here where I can kind of light up the inside of the car. I may reposition it a few times, but here at the end, I'm just gonna get to where I can see. That's all I'm trying to do. And I'm gonna do my final cut right around an eighth to a quarter of an inch larger than it needs to be. The light helps me see really, really easy. Don't want to make a mistake on this because this is the final trim. Okay. I'm happy with that so far. I keep breaking these blades because I don't want to scratch the glass when I cut it. I'm going to start about the middle and work my way back this way. Notice the angle of my blade. I'm laying it down real flat. Okay, and then I'm going to do the opposite and repeat the steps. Breaking the blade again. So far, so good. I don't mind breaking the blade a lot. The price of these blades compared to the cost of replacing or repairing the glass is insignificant. I'm holding my knife kind of funny, but it is flat, almost flat. <clears throat> okay, now I'm gonna go change my blade. This one's about, to, this is about done, and I'm gonna cut around this brake light right here in the next scene. <laughs> Okay, this last step on the final trim is this little uh, rear view mirror section. A lot of little camera right here. I'm just gonna cut around this just really closely. I have the light here so I can see pretty easy what's going on. And I'm gonna cut it almost even with this little lip right here. This film is super light so it's really hard to see small light gaps. I don't want one, but if you had to have a little bitty one, nobody would even notice it hardly. <clears throat> okay. Now that it's trimmed, it's time to prep the inside of the glass. Several steps for that. We're gonna protect the dash. And then after that, we'll be ready to install the film. Okay, this next step is kind of critical. I'm using my Pre-tack formula, which is mostly isopropyl alcohol and a lot of different surfactants. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this thicker white scrub pad, and I'm going to thoroughly just clean the inside of the glass and then dry it down. And then I'll be ready for my uh, final squeegee, which I'm going to use my slip solution for that step. Here we go. If you're using, if you're using enough of this product to where it goes down into the dash, you're using way too much. It's just like a glass cleaner, basically. And we're just gonna clean the glass. It's a sur zero surface tension cleaner. It gets deeper down into the pores and just a, maybe your slip solution mix. Very thoroughly cleans this. It's a step that a lot of people leave off and they just wanna throw the tent on with, that, with, with their slip solution. And sometimes the film doesn't wanna stick. This new laminate acoustical glass in some of these cars are getting harder to get tent to stick to on the sides. And I'm drying it down now, just a, just a cleaning phase. I'm trying to get this glass like super clean before I do a final squeegee. I want it squeaky. And I'm gonna go to the other side, do the same exact thing. Okay. Already sprayed it, so I'm just gonna thoroughly wipe it down. I'm also gonna feel for any like hardened particles or you know any previous sticker glue. This is a brand new car, and I 
don't typically see stuff like that on new cars, but sometimes I do. Just depends on where you get them. Okay, drying this one down. It's not my final cleaning step, it's just a cleaning step. We want the glass to be super clean. We want the film to bond. We don't want it peeling off. We just want everything to go smooth. Okay. All right, now we're gonna do a final squeegee in our next step. Okay, in this step, we're gonna use a, a yellow turbo and a red turbo. The main difference is how they're cut. This is gonna help me get further down into the cracks. This is gonna be my primary squeegee tool. I'm gonna to use my slip solution, which is our tent tack. And I'm gonna lightly mist the glass. I mean, if you're putting more water on this glass where it has to go down these cracks, in my opinion, you're putting way too much. But all I have to do is just put a little bit of water on this, not much, just enough to start the squeegeeing process. <clears throat> I'm also gonna use my microfiber to catch any excess water so I don't make such a big mess. Here we go. Just kind of like do it in rows. I swipe it and wipe it off. I'm trying to get this perfectly clean. This is the last cleaning step, prep, whatever you want to call it before we physically install the film. I like the little point of this thing. It goes right where I want it to go. It's just, um, I just methodically work my way down and across till we get it perfectly clean. This is how you get those clear front windshields. See, it's getting a little tricky for me with this small one, so I have to use my red one now. It's just easier for me to get it deeper down there. I have to stretch so far. Okay, so there's nothing uh, dripping down into the cracks of this car that would cause any problems. I just didn't use that much water. I'm gonna try to wipe the perimeter of everything. I'm gonna go to the other side and do the same thing again. This half is done. This half hadn't started yet, but I was gonna make sure I got, I didn't get a little, a little I missed some water right there, so I sprayed a little extra on there. I'm gonna go across the top. I'm gonna go step by step. Got a little bit of water dripping on this cloth, which is okay. Okay, we're working our way down. So far, so good. I mean, my eyes are on it. I'm looking at everything. I'm trying to see if there's anything that could be causing a tr any trouble and I don't see anything so far. I like working the sides down by themselves. Now I'm getting to the part where I might want to change squeegees just cause it's easier. All right. Maybe a few drops gets down in there, but not, not much. Okay. Now I'm just gonna kind of quickly dry the perimeter. Okay, at this point, I'm gonna miss the inside of the glass. I'm gonna go to the outside, spray the release liner, and I'm gonna start peeling it. And I'm gonna do the reverse roll technique so I can do this by myself. I'm gonna come back in here and sort of straddle in the middle. And then I'm gonna show you how we roll it out and put it on. Okay, this is um, the phase where we do our reverse roll technique. Again, this is our slip solution, which is our tent tack. You can learn more about that at the uh, tenttack.com, T-I-N-T-T-A-C.com. Uh, all the mixing instructions and ratios. The reason I'm, I'm gonna miss this with water is because I wanna keep the static electricity down while I peel this because I don't want anything to stick to my glue as I'm peeling the release liner. I like to start it with my teeth. That's probably a bad habit, but it's the way I've been doing it for 30 years. 
and I ain't gonna change. <laughs> okay, here we go. Now I'm just gonna kind of evenly wet this. Then I'm going to pull the release liner back on top of it. <clears throat> okay. And I'm going to do the other side just like it. I've been able to do it with my teeth and not like put a mark on the side of the film. Uh, if I tried any other way, I've just had bad luck with it over the years, so I've always shied away from it. Not that I can't do it, I just for some reason don't do it. Now everything I've just left on this car, I mean it's still got the soap underneath it and everything. Right now I just want to concentrate on getting the liner back on it and roll it up so I can get it on the inside of the glass. It's been sitting for a little longer than I like to. I may have to re-wet the inside of the glass just a little bit. This tent tack is some good stuff though. I don't ever have any problems with it at all if I mix it right. Pay attention to the temperature. Okay. All right, now we're gonna roll it. Here's how we do that. We always start off right here. I always like to start off on the passenger side. I want to end up on the driver's side because I want to start on the driver's side and roll to the passenger side. That's the way I'm right-handed. That's the way I like to do it. If I do it the other way, it's a little tricky for me. I would say if you're left-handed, that might not be tricky for you. <clears throat> the good thing about this method is I don't have to get in a hurry. I'm not under a lot of stress. And you know, sometimes I can take advantage of that. Like maybe right now, I'll show you what I mean. I can kind of kind of wet this a little bit. If I had um, my chamois or maybe this microfiber, I'm kind of wipe it off so I can kind of see what I'm doing when I put the film on. It's not a final cleaning or anything, just something to help me out a little bit on the inside. I'll, I'll go to the other side and do that too. It doesn't hurt. This is a one-man show technique here. I don't have any helpers, but if I had somebody helping me, they could always share with some of these steps. Maybe I wouldn't have to do the reverse roll. I could just, just take it in and have two, two people in here to help me out. What I'm gonna do now so I'm gonna take my time, but I'm gonna kind of straddle the inside of this. It's kind of an awkward position, but I'm gonna wet the inside of the glass. Not much, just a little bit. I've already wet the film. Got my cloth out. I don't have to worry about these electronics. And I'm gonna this is what I do. I roll it across the bottom. I do not try to roll it on the glass. It's always hard to roll something that's straight onto something that's curved. So, and I support this tube of film all the way to the end because it becomes very bendable. Discard the liner. Then I just ease it on here. I lost about 25 pounds. If I hadn't, uh, I'd be making some really bad noises right now. <laughs> Let's see. Things going good, just don't get in a hurry. Just kind of ease it on there. I can kind of use this as my guide here. The top.
Okay. Now at this point, all you want to do is just position the film exactly where you want it. You got one shot at this. You don't want to keep moving it. Because if you do, you may have some trouble. I'm looking for light gaps. It's on there. I'm not in any danger uh, for any reason, you know, of getting more trash or anything. Um, I'm glad I'm not out in the sun. That would cause this stuff to start setting. You might have a little air pockets trapped in there. But what I'm gonna do is take my turbo squeegee. I'm gonna put it where I want it. And I'm gonna start this initial squeegeeing phase in the middle, kind of working, got a firm pressure. Got I still got a chance to move it around. And I'm gonna continue this pattern of trying to get this middle part down. It's real important for me to see it through to this middle parts down. Then I can divide it up into quadrants here in a minute. Okay. The key here is not to get in a hurry. If you just get this right, you don't have to go fast. There's no hurry here. You just want to get it right. Now I'm going to try to make a chance to get this middle part squeegeed like that. Widen it a little bit. And I'm going to start working on it like in quadrants. I'll tell you something else, guys. I forgot if you're tending a Tesla, I forgot that you got to cut the top part almost dead even or you don't have much room up there. I, I may have to do a little trimming over here. I don't have any problems with that. It's not gonna cause any trouble. It's just, it increases the chances of me getting a little particle or something, you know, in the tent job, if I don't think ahead. I actually tented another Tesla and had the same problem and I had to go back and redo it because I got too much trash up in there for my, for my taste. I had to redo it. This is not the final squeegee, by the way. I'm just trying to work all the, you know, all the bubbles out, the water out, I'm just trying to flatten everything out. Then I'm gonna come back and do a, a final like squeegee type phase where I Okay. I see a part where I gotta do a trim. Little trim, nothing bad. All right, easy peasy. <clears throat> that trim could have been avoided had I been paying more attention on the outside. It really is hard to, to find out those things unless you really just go around them and stick your hands in all the cracks. And I mean, not everybody does that. But if you tent one, you learn from it and you try to remember it, which I didn't do. Okay, now I'm gonna start continuing my squeegeeing process all the way down. and then work it all the way over. And then continue the other side. I'm gonna take a quick 30 second or one minute break. I'm gonna go get my hard squeegee, go doctor, Blue Max. I'm gonna come back and do a final pass on all this and we're gonna really detail it out.
We're almost there. Okay, this is a very important phase. Things may not be looking pretty or they may be blurry or you may be seeing little fingers everywhere. Don't fret. This is the stage that really kind of brings everything together, helps the curing process. But I call this the final pass or the hard tool phase where I literally take a tool like that. I've got leverage. I've got a clean blade, you know, it's real smooth. Sometimes we sand these and make them smooth if you know, after time they wear out and then we ultimately replace them. But um, I'm gonna go really hard and I'm just gonna make this my final pass as we call it. I'm gonna get all the little water out that kind of makes the film look wrinkly and bubbly. And I mean, I'm gonna make it look really nice. I mean, I'm putting some serious pressure on this. I have to grunt a little bit to talk. That's good though, that's what you want. I'm pushing all that little water out that's just so uh, nuisance. Just pushing real hard. And then we're gonna go around the edges here at the end and we're gonna, we're gonna tie it all together. Just continue this process the best you can. Sometimes I have to switch tools. I've got a side swiper some other tools I may pull out to get the bottom of this because I can't get all the way to the bottom with this tool. That's okay, we got another tool for that here. I'm gonna do the other half here. Let's see. Yeah, so far so good. A lot of steps to a front windshield if you do it right. A lot of people don't realize that. I like customers, they say, hey, just, can you just throw in that front windshield? <laughs> okay, <laughs> for another 100, 200 bucks. Let's see here. So far, everything's going good. I still gotta get another tool out here though. Okay. Now I'm gonna bring another tool out that we're gonna uh, do the edges and then we ought to be done. Okay, we pulled out another couple of tools. The bottom still needing to have a little bit more squeegee and I've got these tools here. This is my favorite one to uh, get to the bottom. And uh, this is called a stroke doctor. This one actually, actually is one of my favorites too. It's called a shuttle. And I can utilize both these tools to finish this entire job. And uh, let's start with this one here because it's got the squeegee blade on it. Cause I can get to the bottom of this where I'm struggling a little bit and we can knock out what needs to be squeegeed. Uh, you don't want to spray too much water anywhere in a new car, but I do need to have something to lubricate it so I can get this squeegee to slide. So what we're going to do, oh yeah, we can really get down there nice and easy with this. We can get the remainder of the water out. Oh yeah. Could not reach it with the other squeegee. That was no problem at all. I'm gonna I'm gonna go around and well before I do that I'm gonna I'm gonna alternate my shuttle. See now it's dry down there from the squeegee pass, so I can use this shuttle to kind of get down there too. And it's not good. It's real thin, and it just helps the film lay down a little bit better. And it slides because it's plastic. I'm checking the outside as I'm walking around and I can see that we're almost done. <clears throat> I want to get one more pass over here with the stroke doctor. Okay, we've already hard tooled or done a final squeegee and we used the stroke doctor to do the bottom. Now what we need to do really, and some people start getting involved with heat guns and stuff at this stage, all we need to do is take a towel, paper towel, microfiber, and we just need to go around <clears throat> the edges here, and we need to just soak up the water. Once we do that, everything should lay down nice and smooth, and um, then we just clean the glass, and this car is ready to go. Um, let's just kind of get a, some quick footage of me going around this and see how this does.
Okay, and we'll go to the other side. Paying attention to the edges. Still have a lot of moisture on the inside of the glass. Okay, I've got a finger right here. Okay. Let's see. This one was the one where I had a little bit of trouble. I cut it a little too long for this particular car. It's just, um, just a footnote for you guys that are doing Teslas. Cut them right on the line. If you don't, you'll have to retrim them on the inside and you'll have to do what I'm doing right now. have to uh, contend with some extra fingers. Let me get my heat gun and let's get that one real quick. I'm gonna put a little heat on the outside, but I'm gonna get a little bit on the inside. Okay, <laughs> that was an unusual situation. Shouldn't have had to deal with that, but it is a way I cut it. And I'm glad it happened because everything's not perfect. But I am gonna try to continue with these edges. And I'm also gonna show you a trick. I, I wanna do the same process on the bottom. That's where I bring my shuttle back in. This is my shuttle again. And I'm going to wrap my cloth around it. One of the things I like about the shuttle, I do this a lot. I don't have a certain way. I just wrap the cloth around it and I just kind of come along the bottom. And man, I can get a lot of water out of there. Uh, that water is, is what's causing some of the fingers. And if I can eliminate the water, I can eliminate the little fingers. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. Okay. I'm going to try to look it over and I'm pretty much done. I'm just going to come back and just clean it with glass cleaner and I'll be done. <laughs> 